Hey everybody, Corey at Gemini Guitar, broadcasting from sunny Sydney, Australia, autumn time. It's my favourite time of year. And uh, this has got an autumnal, wintry sort of vibe to it, so it kind of uh, falls into line with the atmosphere. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is uh, moving a specific chord shape, and we're going to be using some open strings with that chord shape. And it is a bit stretchy, so this is a bit of a challenge. But uh, that's the good part about it. I even find myself, I mean, after all these years of playing, you think I wouldn't, but I do get, um, not cramps, but you can feel that, you know, working the muscles in the hand and stuff. So it's really good for your left hand or fretting hand technique. So let's look at the shape. Um, we're going to start with the index on the sixth string. That's fret eight. Third finger goes to the 10th on the fifth. And then the pinky goes to the 12th on the fourth. Now, what I'd recommend is if you are struggling with this shape to begin with, just move it up further up as the frets get less wide uh, or the width of the, the frets reduces. Say we're at uh, fret 15. And then just move it down until you get to the point where you're just slightly uncomfortable. Get that stretch happening and then keep going down until you're able to do it. The lowest you're going to have to go is into the fifth position, which is a bit challenging. But on the other hand, uh, we can do that a different way as well using the open strings. So I'll show you that when we get there. So let's go to the fret eight position. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to pick from the sixth, fifth to the fourth and the fifth again. And then we're going to pick the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now on the last note there, you'll notice that I shifted and that's because we're moving into the next chord just a little bit earlier. And the second bar is actually three, four times. So that means there's one less beat in the bar. So we're going to do the slur from the eighth fret and you want to make sure the other two fingers follow so that the shape moves up as is. So that's a really good practice exercise for your fretting hand. Make sure that some fingers don't go, well, they're not likely to go too far because it is pretty stretchy, but they might go not far enough, you know, like or something like that. So you've got to get them all moving at the same time. Let's have a look at bars one and two. By the way, the delay is set to 79 beats per minute, and that means that it's going to repeat at this tempo. If I was to play an eighth note rhythm, it would repeat the rhythm or sort of overlap in that rhythm. So it's like this. So that's the quarter note, eighth note, eighth note, quarter note. So into the 12th position we go, same shape. We're going to pick the same as what we did for bar one. And the next bar is actually the same as bar two, except there's two extra notes at the end, of course, because we've got the extra beat back. So we get fifth, fourth, fifth, third. And then it's fourth, fifth, sixth, fifth. So let's have a listen to bars three and four. Okay, so let's have a look at the, well actually let's do a playthrough of bars one to four first, and then we'll look at the alternate endings. So here's the first four bars. Cool. So let's look at uh, the alternate ending two. So in this one, we're going to be in the 12th position again. Each of these endings ends in the 12th position shape, 12, 14, 16. And we're going to pick fifth, fourth, fifth to the second string this time, and then back to the third, fourth, and fifth. So it goes like this. And then the sixth at the end. 
Now, what's really important throughout this is to make sure you let as many notes ring out as possible, particularly later on down the track, because that's going to really add some atmosphere to things. As far as the third ending goes, same shape again, 12th position, this time just a different picking pattern. So it's going to go five, four, five, three, and then four, one, two, three. Which by the way, that's an excellent opportunity to let those three notes ring out. So when you do that, and then you move into the next chord, have a listen. Because what you're essentially doing then is forming that chord shape, and then it's as if you're playing those three strings with it. So it's got a really nice airy sort of sound. So it's... And adding in that bass note in the eighth position. Oops. So into the eighth position we go, and same picking pattern as bar one. Same notes actually. Only this time we don't move into the tenth fret at the end, so we stay with the eighth fret on string six. And then we're just going to pick through in the next bar then, fifth, fourth, fifth, third, fourth, fifth. Which is identical to the picking pattern in the second bar. So we get... This is probably my favourite bit. It's a little bit, I wouldn't say unpredictable, but it just sort of comes out of nowhere. And uh, because it's been so repetitive up until now, it sort of just adds a nice little variation. So we're going to go down to the fifth position. Now, this is where things stretch out a bit. So what you may want to do is, um, because I find actually, I used to be a lot better at this when I was younger. So I, I assume my hands have gotten a little bit less flexible than they were, but um, I would probably, if you're struggling with this one, go for the first middle fourth approach for the chord. So you've got index at five, middle at seven, and then fourth finger at the ninth. And that's a lot easier to do. I think because these two fingers here, uh, these ones don't stretch out as well as this, the middle and the fourth finger, at least on my hand. And the other thing, like it's a subtle thing, but when you come from this part, um, it's good to sort of slide into that fifth fret like this. I'll just show you. So it's like, So you slur from the 8th fret on the 6th into the 5th fret on the 6th. I don't know whether I did that in the performance, but I like the sound of it. And that's the way I originally played it, I think, when I was writing this. So. It's a bit tricky though, because you've got to move from, if you're going to use your middle finger there, so you've got to move that. So maybe the best way to approach that would be just to take these two off at the end. And that way then you'll be able to put these two, the middle and the fourth finger in just one at a time after you've um, done the slur. So in the ninth and 10th bar, we're just gonna pick uh, pretty much the same picking patterns we've been doing. So same as bar one, six, five, four, five, three, four, five, six. And then bar two's picking pattern, five, four, five, three, four, five. Now I mentioned that there is another way to do that chord and there is, the only thing is it's likely you're gonna lose the um, particular pattern that's happening here. So you can do it like this in the open position. The only thing is you'd have to sacrifice some of the, um, like I said, some of the notes there. So you might just go from the fifth, something like this maybe, like use the second and the first string perhaps, like. Or you could chuck in string one. So that can be a, a viable alternative. And then we're going to finish on an E minor add nine chord. 
And uh, I discovered this one through Steve Vai for the love of God, the rhythm part. It's a really nice chord. And what we're going to do then is just uh, the same picking pattern. Repeat a bit of that again, slow down a bit. And at the very end there, you just want to gently ripple through the strings. Don't be tempted to just hit them or really hit them hard or fast or anything. It's just like a, a nice ripple. You can also do it from the top string up. Experiment, go to the bridge. That gives it a sort of more mystical sound. You go more into the neck area, you get this nice warm sound. A little bit cloudy, which is nice. So uh, that about wraps things up. So I hope you've enjoyed that lesson and until the next one, bye for now.